Hello and welcome to the video. This is my second video on this model here. This is the Diatone Ripper R690. Now I did a video a couple of weeks ago talking about my initial impressions and how I built this one out and it's still built the same way as in that video. So at the back we have a Matek F411 WSE uh, set up in a very specific way so the DJI FPV stuff on-screen display works. Uh, we have the air unit light at the front with a whacking big heat sink at the top and bottom to help keep it cool. And we have a Nebula Pro in the nose, GPS out on the wing, uh, Emacs servos, uh, metal geared servos under these two little hatches. And then uh, I have a nice 2450 kV motor uh, with a 45 amp PSC and the supplied five inch prop. Now I've been flying this enough uh, and had enough mishaps with it to now kind of give you my tips and tricks and my considered opinion and review. Uh, there is an awful lot to like about this. You will notice that there are lots of things on this. I don't know if you can see, we have blender tape uh, because one of my aliens have been ripped off. Uh, we have a big chunk of hot glue underneath. Uh, holding this side on when it's gone nose in. Um, I'm also replaced the front of both of the winglets because those have been snapped off. So it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but in terms of bang for the buck, this is a fantastic thing that you can pretty much build to however you want. So let me very quickly talk about setup. Central gravity is marked on the bottom of the wings with these little diamonds. I would say that that is pretty spot on. Uh, I would be tempted to get in the middle or the back half of those diamonds. Uh, pitch authority has been a bit, little bit of a problem here. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, travel. Now there's no travel, unfortunately. Come on, diatone. Uh, the CG marksman in here, brilliant, well done. No throws. The challenge is, is with uh, any kind of reasonable servo out here and the supplied servo horn and linkage setup that you get in the kit, which I've been flying it with and it's been okay. I may swap that out, more about that in a moment. Um, I'm getting about an inch of travel, about 25 millimeters. Way too much for this. You need about eight or nine millimeters travel aileron and you need a little bit more than that. I would probably go about 12 millimeters travel for elevator in the uh, Elevon mix for these control surfaces to give you decent authority. Uh, I'll show you what the PID tune came out like this with a 50-50 setup. Uh, it's pretty good in the roll. Uh, the, uh, the kind of the pitch is needs a little bit of work. I'll show you what I'm doing with that. Uh, building tip. If you want to put things like your GPS out in your wing, because the wings are glued in, I would cut and sink that in and do all that stuff before you attach the wings. It's a shame the wings aren't removable. That would make it easier to fix stuff. Although this is pretty bulletproof apart from those um, hiccups. And this has bounced up and down various fields over the last two or three weeks. Flying weight for me is 562 grams. I am going to laminate this thing now. It's all back together again. because I literally just had to... Uh, put that piece back on that you've just seen in the pictures. I'm going to laminate the skids underneath for protection. I'm going to laminate the leading edges and I'm going to laminate these winglets, uh, particularly the bottom half. Uh, these seem to be a bit of a problem. Uh, I think it's because by default the front of these winglets come out by three or four millimeters and whenever it cartwheels it just seems to snap that piece off. Uh, I've replaced the foam uh, and these are squidgy and they don't seem to be coming off now uh, but I've broke both of them off. I'm using a 1300 4S battery in this and that gets my central gravity more or less spot on with the layout as I have it here. I have had to put 20 grams of uh, lead into the nose. I really hate putting dead weight in but with that I've got it on the central gravity marks pretty much spot on uh, the little marks in the bottom and it's flying great. That 1300 4S battery will only give me about six minutes flight time if there is spirited flying. And this is incredible fun to fly in a spirited way. Um, getting 102 miles an hour top speed in straight and level flight, 100% throttle. So uh, it's not a slouch, even with the standard kind of um, 2450 motor, five inch prop that it comes with this. Um, glad I went for a 45 amp ESC. 
even at kind of 50% throttle, it's cruising at about 65 miles an hour, pulling about 20 amps. So um, this is not a cruiser. <laughs> I could probably fly it a lot slower than that, but it just seems to be one of those models that's just want to be flown like you stole it. Let me show you what the PID tune looks like on the model uh, as I have it here. Uh, just again, this is how the linkages are set up. So it's on the outside hole of these Emacs servos into the small hole on the control surface. Um, and this is what the PID tune looks like. So you can see here that the roll is pretty good. Um, there's an awful lot of feed forward going into the pitch and that's indication that with a standard 50-50 mix, um, it's not quite enough and in fact if you look at the rates you can see in the rates as well uh, it, the rate of the, of the, for pitch is just horrific so I've actually increased the mix a little bit for the pitch just to give me a little bit more authority and also to help with kind of launches and things like that as well interesting with a wing like this you would expect it to fly slightly nose up in reality, I'm finding that it's flying pretty straight and level, to be honest. It's probably only a de degree or two uh, below where this mould line is in the side of the model. So I would set your camera up for about there. So my camera is looking pretty much straight out, uh, and that seems to be about right. I'm guessing because there is reflex moulded into the back of the wing, it's actually keeping the nose up. Uh, so some of the natural nose up that you need in this, uh, you don't need anywhere as much as you think so mount your camera looking straight out initially i would do it in line with that mold line and see how you get on other thing to mention is the dji air unit uh, the air unit light that's at the front in here it has got some massive solid copper heat sinks on the top and the bottom and i am having no problems at all with keeping it cool there is a little bit of airflow there's a couple of vents at the front and a little bit of air coming around the camera and that seems to be enough uh, particularly when you fly at high speed the only thing i would say is that uh, i have had this get really hot once and that was when i was flying in 31 degree weather when it was incredibly warm so if you are regularly flying in those very high temperatures uh, then you might need to cut some more cooling or a vent or something either in the top or the bottom to help keep the DJI stuff cool. Of course, if you're not using the DJI HD stuff, you don't have to worry about that. As I've mentioned, uh, this is reasonably tough, but it is prone to damage. As I've said, I've ripped off the front of both of these. This seems to be a common thing. It's happened to my friends as well. Took an aileron, uh, sorry, elevon off uh, and then used the good old way of putting it back on with uh, blender and tape, which is my preferred way of doing it and uh, smashed open the nose on a particularly hard crash and used uh, just a line of hot glue. Hot glue is working great on this foam for keeping it all together and when things get a little bit loose, like for example this wing was starting to get loose, just put a little bead of hot glue in there and just uh, shove the wing back into place and it is pretty bulletproof. If they made a Mark II, there's a couple of things that I would want to see. First of all, I would want a place designed for a little GPS unit so that you don't have to go cutting into foam and messing around and doing that. It would be nice for a wing like this to have thought about that and have somewhere to pop it. Uh, no detail on the recommended throws. Uh, really disappointing diatone for not putting those out there. I really struggled to find what they should be and in fact copied my friend's throws. So I would say eight to ten millimeters for your aileron uh, will give you the kind of roll rates that i'm getting which is nice fun roll rates i need, would say you probably need 12 to 15 millimeters that kind of range to get the pitch authority that you need if your cg is in the right place so uh, use those the manual about how you put this thing together is almost useless it's pretty straightforward to be honest there aren't that many bits of foam uh, but something like that you know I looked at a Hobby King wing uh, plane a couple of weeks ago and it had something like a quick start guide uh, you know with the central gravity and the throws recommended battery uh, tips and tricks for setup those kind of things that stuff should be around for something like this but hopefully after watching this video uh, you'll know how to set yours up a little bit more the space inside um, looks huge when you first get it, but it disappears really quickly. With a flight controller at the back, a DJI Air unit at the front, and it kind of has to be there because the cable isn't long enough to put it anywhere else, uh, there isn't as much room for battery as you think. It would have made sense for the body to be a smidgen wider, and then you could have mounted the battery laterally across, 
Um, there are some extra cute little tricks like that. A little bit more cooling would have been nice for the DJI system. Uh, the camera mounting uh, is a bit of a hit and miss affair. I wanted mine slightly adjustable, so I ended up creating these little things that are on Thingiverse. So if you want to download them, you can to mount your own camera, a 19 by 19 millimeter camera in the nose. And it also means then you have a little bit of uh, wiggle room if you want to move the, the position the camera is in. The supplied linkages and control horns are meh. I'm not a massive fan of them, to be honest. They've been working fine. Um, I think uh, next time I do something with the Elevons, I will probably replace these with some adjustable links. You know, they have the little kink in the middle. I'm not sure what that's for, because to be honest, this is quite a sturdy piece of metal. And even in the high speed flying that I've been doing, I haven't noticed that acting like a spring. Maybe it is, but I would probably prefer a more direct connection. These are Emacs digital uh, metal geared servos they're good servos so you know I'd like them to be controlling the control surfaces directly rather than having this weird kink in there uh, that would be nice to be able to get into the control horn to play with it there isn't any kind of recess once it's in here and you've put the cover over it then it's a one-shot deal so make sure your servo horn is 90 degreed and you've got it all set up before you glue the servo in and put this little sticker on the top uh, it's going to be painful to get that kind of stuff out or to maybe change the positioning of the hole so I would test fit everything before you finally glue your servos in. Last couple of things and I'm kind of getting a bit nitpicky with this but this is such a nice model that I feel that uh, I can. This little cover here for the ESC at the back I'm using a reasonably large ESC I wanted to make sure that it absolutely could handle the abuse it was going to get. Uh, this cover this plastic cover is actually glued in it would be lovely if that came unglued it would allow you access into here to set things up and to do everything um, you kind of have to work through the slot at the front and also be aware that there is a carbon rod in front of where the ESC goes so you have to take that into account when you're sighting everything and the only other thing then is there is a bit of lack of protection for the skids uh, these when you come down on gravel are just going to get torn to pieces again I'm going to cover mine in a couple of bits of laminate on these leading edges and my winglets just to make it a little bit more robust so in summary this with all that said is absolutely fantastic if you can get one of these wings for cheap money uh, and put a couple of servos and some FPV gear receiver and an ESC pop a motor and prop on the back uh, this is spectacular fun. It is small, portable. It would be nice if things like the wings came off. But actually, just for going to the field, throwing up, and just hooting and flipping and rolling around in the sky, this is great. I'm glad this is out. This is probably what I'm going to recommend for people uh, to get if they're looking for this size of wing, uh, 690 millimeters. Now, the ZOHD Dart is dead because this is just fun with wings. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.